What is up, everybody? It is Thursday, May 19th, 2022 AD, and it is 9.01 a.m. U.S. Pacific Daylight Time here in Los Angeles. And some people are requesting a loosey-goosey time. Lady C is asking for, hoping for a loosey-goosey time, Hake. Well, maybe, maybe, we'll see. Gonna talk briefly. Did you catch my appearance? Last Appearances last night. Debates and discussions. Pretty cool. You can check out thehakereport.com slash appearances. Lots of mess going on in the world. If you didn't hear Hake News, I'll tell you a little bit, even if you did hear it, I'll tell you a little bit about the ongoing attack in the name of Georgia, Florida. I wonder what George would think about the attack on the whites in his name. And speaking of George, George W. Bush had an interesting statement about Iraq. He means Ukraine. <laughs> and phony Joe Biden swooping in to pretend to care about mothers with infants. Give me a break. Um, you can call in, too, guys. And there were some things that I wanted to get it to yesterday that I did not get to at all. Because I stayed on with T-Jump for an hour and 20 minutes and then calls and all kinds of stuff. Uh, but anyway, guys, let's get right on with the show! One, two, three, four. Oh. How are you guys doing? I am fine. Are you remembering to pray for uh, the persecuted whites <laughs> in America, in their own country? Don't do that. Terrible intro. Don't do that again, Hey, Don't do what again? I don't know exactly what I did wrong or what I did. Um, yes, remember to pray for the persecuted whites in the country and the persecuted other people, perhaps. Christians, and it's so, it's so wrong. I'll get to that. I am wearing my You Are A Beta Male t-shirt. It is JLP on it. He's actually pointing at Mark Ridley Thomas. I've covered this before. You can find yours by going to rebuildingtheman.com slash stores. I do have Hake t-shirts, but this is a JLP t-shirt. Jesse Lee Peterson Spreadshirt, I think is what it is. Rebuildingtheman.com slash stores. Very nice. Very nice. Shout out to JLP. I'm on his network. Um, and by the way, did you catch Hake last night or yesterday afternoon on a, on a Modern Day Debate? Shout out to Modern Day Debate and James Kuntz and Kaz, who has been guest hosting f for my appearances on Modern Day Debate lately. Um, Kaz also, who is, who started the Factitionalist Network, Factitionalist Network, and he's interviewed me in after shows, after my debates with Hunter Avalon. I've debated Hunter Avalon a couple of times. I think it was Hunter, after Hunter both times, that he debated, he interviewed and debated me, this atheist, uh, he calls himself a cappuccino guy, cappuccino because he's both white and black. But uh, very interesting conversations. I talked about gay, quote unquote, gay adoptions. Hunter Avalon brought tons of facts, lots of facts, studies. He, th he thinks that studies w should convince me to support gays adopting kids. No, don't think so. I think common sense trumps studies. But uh, he was comparing, it was interesting. It was very interesting, actually. He was. He said that there was 30 years worth of studies, which is not that long, in my opinion. Long time for him. Uh, 30 years of studies show that uh, gay, quote-unquote, gay adoptive parents 
and why are they s- experimenting on kids in this way anyway? But are do just as good a job, if not better, as adoptive parents than normal straight, quote unquote, normal straight parents. Adoptive parents, I am assuming. I don't. I haven't looked at the studies that he's rec- that he's referencing, but I'm leery. Gay- <laughs> Children do better under gay parents than straight parents? Hmm. Sounds suspicious. Suspect. As good or better, according to him. But, uh, I saw one of my regular viewers claimed that I lost hard. If I lost the debate, does that mean that he agrees with the debater who he thinks beat me? I don't know. But, uh, very nice. Very interesting. And thanks to Hunter Avalon for another fun discussion. He has adopted the term female-minded to mock me, I guess. But female-minded is a good term to say because that is what's going on across the board. And honestly, a point that I did not make last night that I would like to make is that when you're comparing quote-unquote straight adoptive parents or straight quote-unquote parents and quote-unquote gay parents, so-called parents, you're, adopt- you're comparing fallen state people to fallen state people. That's not a standard. That's, that's no standard in terms of what's right. You're just comparing fallen state people. That doesn't, that doesn't tell you that one thing is right or one thing is wrong. The nature of things shows you that one is wrong. I was looking at Asmodor's telegram, TKR official over there. On Telegram, you know the Russian social media app? Based social media app. (laughs) Maybe not so based. Um, And there was this headline that I thought that I saw on his Telegram. I'm on Telegram. JLP is also on Telegram. JLP Talk. And I thought I saw Pete Boot Edge Edge. You know, the radical homosexual phony Christian. I think he's a phony Christian. I think he pretends to be a Christian. Secretary of the Department of Transportation. Affirmative action. Radical homosexual secretary of the Department of Transportation. Under Sleepy Joe Biden. I suppose. I think this headline said that he went out looking. Desperate hunt for baby formula. Because remember that crazy disgusting headline of. Pete Boot Edge Edge. Radical homosexual fake married to his. So called husband Chastin or whatever is gross name is not that his name is gross but the it's it's gross it's wrong neither of them can feed the babies naturally the way a, a normal healthy woman mother actual mother should and would so they have to go get the baby formula <laughs> isn't that interesting one more one more count against the gays being anywhere near the babies and the, and the children. Right. Why can't, why can't he breastfeed? Asks Max Eisenhardt. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to picture it, though. What a mess. Anyway, um, so check that out. Let me know what you think. You can call in. Uh, I do see that there were some super chats about that. I appreciate it. Thank you, chat, for joining, and I believe, by and large, behaving yourselves in the live chat on those other channels and supporting them. That's very cool. Um, That's really cool. I appreciate that. Very nice. Anyway, um, there was this story, and I don't have the clip for you. Maybe you'll see the clip on the Jesse Lee Peterson show at some point. But I got this tip from somebody in the, uh, from somebody in the, um, on Twitter, you know, far left Twitter, but this guy is not necessarily far left. And this is a report from WXYZ, charges dismissed against a COVID patient, COVID patient, interesting, (laughs) who assaulted a senior citizen in a nursing home. Very... Interesting, the framing here. This is from WXYZ, which is ABC7 Detroit. Out of Michigan. Um, 
he shouldn't be in prison, opens this, uh, article, uh, opening paragraph. Marty Hayden, Marty Hayden said about his son, Jay Don, who is now 22, who had been facing multiple charges, including assault for the May 2020 beating, beating of Norman Bledsoe inside a nursing home on Detroit's west side. This was a black on white crime. A black on white crime. The charge, but they don't mention that. If it were white on black, they'd be sure to mention a white man who assaulted a black senior citizen. But that rarely happens. I guess black on white crime is kind of common, quite common actually. And so they find it unremarkable. They don't report about it. They don't report on it. But anyway, this Jaden Hayden uh, had his charges dismissed after he was found incompetent. Oh, blacks are incompetent. (laughs) Uh, Ooh, gotta drop the charges. Effectively, the insanity defense. And I believe he was insane, or is insane. He now resides in a psychiatric hospital in the Kalamazoo area where he cannot come and go. Isn't that interesting? And Marty Hayden, you know, I watched a little clip. I don't have it for you right now. But this father, don't know my initial impression of this father is he's somewhat immature. And this guy had autism as a kid, supposedly had autism as a kid. And uh, which I don't know if that's a physical or or a mixture of different things. And then later he was diagnosed with schizophrenia. And... I'm leery about these mental, so-called mental health diagnoses. And I think it may have a little bit to do with the raising, or maybe a lot a bit to do with the raising of these people. And perhaps some other physical issues. You know, they, there may be some physical thing that happens in the child's life or development. Either inside or outside the womb. Some have pointed to... Shots, which I don't know, but I have heard it, and I've heard them say, oh, it's debunked, it's debunked, it's debunked. You know, the, the, the speculation about the cause of autism, I am, uh, or the various causes of autism, and what it actually is, and can it be overcome, and is it something like it becomes a mental trap? You call yourself autistic, and then becomes, or you're called that, and so it becomes a constant excuse, and so... Where you could grow and improve, you are actually hamstrung and hampered by your own mind and the mind of everybody around you. Nobody, low expectations, you know? Mental health is not an excuse, says uh, this uh, guy in the chat, Max Eisenhart. Yeah, I agree. Is that who who said it? Yeah. For some reason, uh, his chats are catching my eye this morning. And it is morning for me... Afternoon for uh, some of you back east or further overseas. So the system is going to fail him again. Marty Hayden said if his son hadn't been convicted, had been convicted and sent to prison, it would have only worsened his mental health issues. So the system is going to fail him again. He's not going to be rehabilitated, this guy says. So he's blaming the system. He's blaming the system. I'm not, I'm leery of this father. I'm leery of parents who think, oh, you know, there's parents who their child, their adult child or growing child, teenager, becomes wayward. It's his friends. Ah, it's the friends that they're keeping. Nothing to do with your poor raising, you know? Hmm. But anyway. Oh, Marty Hayden is hoping to find a lawyer to hold those responsible for placing his son in the nursing home because... In Michigan, like in New York, these China virus patients, called, falsely called COVID, it's really the China virus patients, are, were relocated into nursing homes. And this was a 20-year-old, 22 now. I think he was about 20. This guy who, it was a viral video. He's just punching, wailing on this, on this old man who was a, what is he? A, a, uh, I think he was a veteran. I could be mistaken. 
For some reason, I had the impression that he was a, a veteran. Old guy who died within a couple of months. His death was not ruled a homicide. Not ruled a homicide. Maybe had the politics been different, they might have found somebody or a couple of so-called experts that ruled his death a homicide. Kind of like they ruled the Georgia-Florida death a homicide. Rather than an overdose death. Hmm. Jadon Hayden videotaped himself. Not with actual videotape, but he recorded him. Video recorded himself. I think it was not tape. Uh, repeatedly hitting Bledsoe as the army veteran, yes indeed, army veteran, lay on his bed, laid on his bed. Two men shared a room at the Westwood Nursing Center on Detroit's west side. He was in a group home. He called his father to say he was hearing voices and thought people were out to kill him. He was in crisis mode. But then he, in early May 2020, he called 911 so that he could be sent to a hospital for treatment. And, uh... It was there, I guess, that he was diagnosed with the China virus, and so he got sent to a nursing home. He had dreams of becoming a boxer, so maybe he thought that punching this old... Was he in his 90s? That guy was old, and just uh, punched him like a punching bag. So evil. And I wonder, it is speculation, but I wonder... Whether, like so many other POCs and blacks, they are brained and tra- trained and brainwashed to hate whites, especially old school whites, old white men. You know what I mean? The old school American, I want to say the word, but I don't want to say it. Because I want to be a good example to the kids, I guess. (laughs) Or, you know, the parents. I don't want to disappoint the parents. But, uh, the ones who are just... crotchety and just speaking their mind and like, Get out of here! Type of stuff. What are you doing? What are you kids doing? Excuse me. Stuff like that, you know? I wonder if he, uh, was... It was motivated by this anti-white hatred brainwashing that's pushed into people. Yeah, and I wonder, I do wonder if that had to do with his death. He did die two months later. (sighs) Oh, white men are the worst. (laughs) Yeah, terrible. So anyway, uh, the family of this senior citizen victim, army veteran, Norman Bledsoe, want actual justice to happen. I don't believe in the insanity defense. I believe in actual, uh, you know, punishment for what you do. You can't say, oh, you can't be punished just because you're incompetent. You don't know what's going on. And I believe that he had had this boy, not a boy, young male, adult male, had some serious issues. So much evil in the world. Serious Mental, psycho-spiritual Ill- issues, to quote JLP, right? Psycho-spiritual. It's not mental illness. Crazy, though. Anyway, so, uh, before I get to calls, you can call in. Some of you are already on hold. But, let me tell you about another so wrong story. The ongoing attack upon the whites. The attack on cops, by the way, is the attack on whites. Even the cops who are not white, who are being attacked. Pray for Officer Derek Chauvin. It's part of the attack on men, too. The attack on real authority. The people who are supposed to be authorities, right? The fathers and city leaders. Pray for Derek Chauvin and pray now for Thomas Lane. You heard of Thomas Lane? He is the other man who was a white man who worked for Minneapolis, Minnesota Police Department. And now he is, uh, he has pleaded guilty to manslaughter. According to the Washington Compost and uh, the New York, failing New York slimes. And he even said, according to his statement, let's see, what this, what does it say? 
listen to the listen to the framing of this article how it starts out um, by Holly Bailey, Minneapolis national correspondent for the Washington Com- Washington Compost, a former Minneapolis police officer who sh- held Georgia Florida's legs as he begged for breath and ultimately lost a pulse beneath the knee of Derek Chauvin. Pray for Derek Chauvin. Two years ago, pleaded guilty on Wednesday, yesterday, to a state charged by the corrupt state of Minnesota, I think, right, of aiding and abetting. No, 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 no. Okay, aiding and abetting second-degree manslaughter in the black man's killing. And they capitalized the B in the word black because they're kissing up to blacks. Thomas K. Lane, L-A-N-E, entered his guilty plea early Wednesday before Hennepin County District Court Judge Peter A. Cahill. He's the same guy, I believe, who was in Derek Chauvin's thing, I think. Cahill. I recognize the name for some reason. As part of the plea deal, prosecutors dropped a count of aiding and abetting second-degree unintentional murder. What a charge. What kind of a state is Minnesota? They believe that there's a second-degree unintentional murder against Lane in the case. So he got the murder charge dropped. Unintentional murder. What type of a murder charge is that? I now make no claim that I am innocent, read this plea agreement, signed Tuesday by Elaine. And that's what that statement read. read. And that's the deal. You know, Baked Alaska said, I'm only pleading guilty because, but I, because they're, you know, threatening me and doing other stuff. Baked Alaska was a January 6th patriot. To this day, he is a patriot, I think. And... He probably, fool- probably foolishly entered into the uh, Capitol building. I don't know if he was one of the people ushered in by the cops, l- allowed in by the cops, but he went into, like, I don't know, was it Nancy Pelosi's office? And uh, he, he took a picture of, I mean, he, there's a picture of himself acting like he's on the phone in the office, maybe. He's like, oh, Trump would love this. I feel that, that was a bit foolish, but he's... They're trying to put a felony on him and all kinds of stuff. And he said, you know what, I'm, a, I'm innocent, but I'm just pleading guilty just because they're threatening me. And the cops, like, I mean, the judge is like, you can't say you're, you're guilty if you think you're innocent. So he won't let him plead guilty. <laughs> uh, so he can't take his plea deal. But right on for, to him for that. Unfortunately, maybe. I don't know if it's fortunate or unfortunate, actually. Thomas Lane makes no claim that he is innocent because he has to take this, he feels he should take this plea deal. Sometimes that's what happens. Innocent people plead guilty and make no claim that they are innocent. Lane and two other officers, J. Alexander Kung, Kung, Asian guy, and Tao Tao, Tu Tao, another Asian guy, I think, were convicted. I think they were both Asians. I'm not sure. One of them might have been black were convicted in February of federal, in federal court, corrupt court, right? Federal court, usually corrupt, more often corrupt than the states, is my sense about it. Uh, violating Georgia, Florida's so-called civil rights when they failed to intervene with Chauvin, who was on the neck or shoulder blade area, you know, uh, which was, according to police policy, I thought, I thought I saw it was in the training manual. Knee on the neck. It was from, like, the IDF, even. Israeli defense forces, right? Or am I mixed up on that? And he didn't, they also didn't provide medical aid to the male criminal suspect as he complained of struggling to breathe before going motionless. What a mess, huh? These cops have to be, have to like baby these huge criminals. This guy's a huge criminal. (laughs) Georgia, Florida, criminal suspect anyway, huge. He was like, oh, big. And they have to act like, oh, we have to go and, and give, the, give these people special treatment. Knee on the neck is not in the police manual, says Rich. Uh, pretty sure it is. Somewhere in there. Pretty sure I saw a, a photograph of it. Unless I caught some fake news. Entirely possible. But I think that there was something to it. Some said that it was actually on the shoulder blade, though. Not even really on the neck. But, uh, you know, the stress, he's every bit responsible for his own death, you know? In my opinion. Had he not been overdosing, don't think he would be having that a medical emergency. 
He asked to be put on the ground. What, are they supposed to just let him be on the ground and just get away? He was resisting arrest for several minutes. Don't put me in this, in the, they put him in the SUV. Don't put me in the SUV. Uh, I, I'm claustrophobic. Put me on the ground. I can't breathe. Like he was saying that, if I remember correctly, correct me if I'm wrong, I could be mistaken. If I remember correctly, as he was going down on the ground, you know, getting down on the ground, laying down, he was saying like he can't breathe. Before they even, maybe, I don't know, maybe by that point they were on top of him. Who knows? He was zooted out of his mind. Zooted, is that another word for, uh, High and, and overdosing. He had overdosed before, and he was calling for his mama, which is his word for his white girlfriend, who is also an addict of this fentanyl stuff, this nasty stuff, this uh, painkiller, fentanyl. But anyway, uh, interesting that they went after the other white cop first. Is it my imagination, or are they going after the white cops first? This, uh, Thomas Lane guy. Huh. People say that he swallowed all of his fentanyl or something, or his drugs, before- while he was getting arrested, or before he was. I don't know if that's true. Is that true? How- how- how extensive of an autopsy did they do? I don't know. I don't want to say- I don't want to jump ahead and say something that may not be true. I do enough speculation because- we live in a world that's, you're not given all of the information, you're given select information. You know? <sighs> he was crying for his mama, she dead, but he also called his girlfriend his mama. <laughs> so who knows whom, to whom he cried. <sighs> Georgia, Florida. And then his daughter, my daddy changed the world! With Georgia, Florida's NBA friend. Having her on his shoulders. It's, it's so wrong. Pray too for the McMichaels. I always say this. Travis and Gregory McMichael and Roddy Bryan. Those men who were looking out for their community. And uh, maybe they were ill-advised. Looking back on it, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, as they say. Trying to confront this Ahmad Arbery, blah, 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 blah. Seemed like they'd had problems with him before, or serious, legitimate suspicions about him before. Credible suspicions. <laughs> and, uh, he attacked the guy with the gun, and the guy with the gun had to shoot him. What a shame. And now they're serving life. Whew. Seems like just the other day I was talking about this fake racism thing. Oh, that other guy who shot up the Buffalo store, which, that wasn't justified. Uh, he's, he's appeared in court today, too. Hmm, what a mess. Anyway, you guys can call in 888-775-3773. Uh, let's get to some lighter stuff, shall we? Well, nothing's lighter than war, right? War is nice and light. <laughs> uh, I came across this clip. Maybe you, many of you have seen it. It's George W. Bush, the greatest president of the 2000s since the year 2000, from 2000 to 2004. <laughs> the only president during that time, right? Here is whom I voted for twice. I turned 18 and I voted for him. Oh, I don't have the clip. Oh, let me see if I can put that in. Thank you for the heads up on that. What a mess. I do have to show you some other things going on. Oh, man. Okay. So, let me give you the brief thing on it while I get it ready. Uh, George W. Bush was speaking at the, what, the George W. Bush Foundation or something like that? Some type of, some type of thing. And this guy is starting to preach against Putin. Last time I heard this guy preach, I feel like I heard him preaching against Trump. Phony preaching by this phony Christian who says that his wife saved him from alcoholism or something like that. Oh, my wife saved me. 
Didn't he say something like that? I think it's in the folder now. Let me know if it's ready. Um, and then I will get to calls. Hang tight, guys. But I saw this on from BNO News on Twitter. Former U.S. President George W. Bush, the decision of one man to launch a wholly unjustified and brutal invasion of Iraq, I mean Ukraine. <laughs> this guy is the one who went into Iraq. Not that he was one man. I mean, <laughs> people were on his side. A lot of people were on his side for this. But I'm sure that there are a lot of people on Putin's side for what he's doing. And maybe as justified, I don't know. Here's clip 15, just a brief half-minute clip. Here's uh, George W. Bush. The result is an absence of checks and balances in Russia and the decision of one man to launch a wholly unjustified and brutal invasion of Iraq. I mean, of Ukraine. (laughs) Iraq, too. Anyway. uh, (laughs) 75. Uh... Here's the- cute, huh? Wasn't that cute? You want to see el- something else that's cute? But not that cute, like men should not be cute. <laughs> Here's this guy. I have to show you these pictures of him loving Michelle Obama. So-called loving. These people, neither of them have any love. I don't even think George W. Bush voted for our greatest president, Donald J. Trump. Who surpassed him in greatness, right? He surpassed the Bushes in greatness, in my opinion, even as a one term president. Well, one term with an asterisk, right? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens. But here's, uh, here's pictures of George W. Bush cozying up to his. He's acting like she was his nanny when he was growing up, but he's this old, older guy, and he has her hand in his hands. They're sitting like, I don't know, what is this, at a funeral or a graduation or something like that? Look, there he is, kissing her, shaking Barack's hand, kissing Michelle Obama. And yes, I think she's a female. Forget you guys. Not forget, but I disagree with you guys. Oh, you know know what? Are those Ukraine flag tassels behind them? Is this? I don't know. But look at that. And then, oh, he's like rocking around. Holding his wife's hand, holding Michelle's hand, acting silly, being being a a goofy person. I can't just say the G word with no Y at the end because I heard that that's a bad word in Canada. And I have a Canadian audience and I don't want Canadian children to be repeating bad words <laughs> to their parents that are considered bad words by... Look, she's holding his hand because he's like goofing off being silly and Barack... Zoom in on Barack's face. He's like being all smiley and... And silly. Zoom in on these faces if you can. Oh my gosh, embarrassing. He's like Michelle. It's like Michelle's being the mama to both of them. What in the world? Barack and Michelle, the most, two of the most hateful, hate filled people, openly hate filled, express, openly expressing their hatred towards whites, cops. America. And this, and this Bush guy thinking it's cute to be cozying up with them. Shows you where he is. Hake doesn't know what a woman looks like. <laughs> oh, terrible. He was always a neocon monster. Republicans got duped by Bush. And many others, many others. I even voted for Romney. I guess people shouldn't get along? From what Hake says, says uh, Rich, shout out to Rich over there on Facebook. Yeah, I know. Isn't it interesting that none of these people like Trump? Trump doesn't go to their stuff. They don't go to Trump's stuff. They hate Trump. So wrong. It's, it's sick. Very sick. But, uh, yeah, um, he's like a little boy with around the so-called ladies. I need holy water eye drops. I know. Isn't it kind of traumatizing? For those of you listening to the audio podcast, I hope that I sort of described it somewhat well. 
Maybe you can go look up those pictures, or maybe I'll put one in the thumbnail for today's show later for the audio podcast afterwards. No, she is a woman, says uh, Robert <laughs> Lee. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Anyway, let me get to a call or two, guys. I'll talk about another joke of a president, the current so-called president. But first, let me get to Alex in Sweden on the line. How are you doing, Alex? Hi, Hake. I'm hey. doing well. Um, Hake, I wanted to ask you about this guest you had, uh, Dylan uh, guy. Yeah, Dylan yeah, Burns. Yeah, uh, two Dylan days Burns. ago I talked with Dylan Burns on the Hake Report. I had two guests this week. Yes, uh, I don't want to say, like, I apologize, but uh, I kind of mistook myself on this. I don't mean to be Oh, yeah, you rude, called in during I his thought, show, right? During uh, his appearance, yeah, yeah, and you talked to him, yeah, 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 because I didn't know so much about him, and because the thing was, uh, there is this woman. Uh, her name is Katie Hopkins. I yeah. think she's been on the Fallen State with Jesse yes. Peterson. I think that's correct. Yeah. I believe so too. Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know it, but she was actually here in Sweden, and she wanted to show this migrant problem. Um, so she, but she was attacked and she was chased away. And that, uh, when I, uh, this Dylan guy was in Poland, I was just thinking that perhaps, you know, male Americans should come here to Sweden, not to promote the country or see the country, but, you know, to see the situation, what it's doing. But this, the Dylan, he kind of just brushed off, uh, if you remember what I was trying to tell him. I remember you talking about the problems with the so-called refugees coming into Sweden yeah. and other other European countries and these are not European refugees, these are outright foreigners. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and my second quest or uh, or question to you is um I was I was talk- no uh, let me talk like this. Uh Nazis yeah, you know, every once in a while, when these people, uh, SJW crazies, you, when you, you know, when they get angry at you, sometimes they're like, "You're a Nazi, you're a Nazi sympathizer," and all that. Yeah. And the, th- the thing is, I was talking to this uh, a friend of mine. He's from Argentina, and he told me that when the war when the war ended, a lot of Nazis uh, fled to Argentina because it was one of the few countries that legally took them. And from Argentina, a lot of them, when they were established and got their papers, they started to go more and more into other countries in South America. Uh, What I'm trying to say is that a lot of these Nazis have started, you know, families with Argentinian women. And a lot of, there are a lot of people in in generally from South uh, America that are, uh, uh, you know, so to speak, from Nazi descent, or how to speak. I just find it so ironically that a lot of these people scream Nazi, Nazi, while, you know, if you understand what I'm trying to say. That they themselves have, have been a part of that world? Yes, yes. Interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. Yes. To me, it's, to me, and, it's very uh, selective the evil that they choose to point out, and I don't even trust them to accurately point out and diagnose evil as evil, much less come come up with solutions for what love is. They don't, they don't point out, they don't even look at their own hatred in their own hearts, so they can't see what other people's hate. You know what I mean? It's the old, take the log out of your own eye before you take out the speck in your brother's eye. But they're too e- all yeah. too eager to go after the white brothers, the white brothers, yeah. and uh, try to take out the specks. Oh, you have, because, oh, you have racism w- in your heart. <laughs> yeah, because I'm, I'm kind of afraid because uh, the thing that happened, this, this shooting that happened recently in America, that this guy who shot black people. Yeah, uh, I'm kind, I'm kind of afraid that because. It is kind of getting heated here in Sweden that, you know, a, a couple of, uh, not a couple, but many Swedes are getting angry at the situation. Yeah. 
Um, I, I think sooner or later something similar is going to happen here and all hell is going to break loose because, um, yeah. Yeah, they want that. to The uh, evil people, the liberals, lick yeah. their chops anytime a white oh, yeah. does something that they let can no, call wrong. Yeah, let no crisis go to waste or how you say it. Exactly. Even if you have to make up uh, a hey, crisis or pretend something is a crisis when it's not that bad. But hey, uh, one last thing that literally scared me was that I was watching Tucker Carlson and he was talking something about this. There was something, this this information act thing, department or something that yeah. got canceled. In America. And yep. I, I, yeah, 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 yes, yes. Uh, I didn't know so much about it, but then he was speaking about this female who was supposed to be charge of it or, or something. Yes. And they played this clip where she was like acting like a lunatic. She was like karaoke or something. And I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> really? Really? Yeah. I haven't reported at all about the disinformation board that the Biden administration was trying to set up. But uh, I have seen little bits and pieces. Perhaps I'm remiss in not covering it at all. But I have seen bits and pieces, at least screenshots, of this lady, and I use the term loosely, and she has prior TikTok videos, and she just looks like a nutcase. That's not a, that, that, that's the ick, man. That, that's something possessed. Yeah, re- good word. <laughs> yeah. And so this woman thinks that she's going to uh, fight against disinformation, misinformation, malinformation, and... I I don't know what the backlash was that made them stop, and uh, but there there has to be some kind of it's like soon the people at the nut house are gonna be the same ones right it it I mean ah uh, 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 but you know it's it's lunacy I guess it's it really what is good at yeah hey, so you were scared by all, as always and thank you for I'm sorry you were scared by that woman her. <laughs> Her uh, behavior? Look, look, the thing is, uh, maybe you, uh, if I to say use my imagination, I was like, imagine like sitting on a, you know, 20 hours flight with her. Right. <laughs> on a, you know, it would be a nightmare. True. Uh, I mean, and then you find, then you find out that this thing is in charge in government and you would be like, okay. Okay, now we're literally on the Looney Tunes planet yeah. or something. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. But well, thank you, so, thank you, Hey, for taking my call, and uh, always a good show, and shout out to the crew and everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. I appreciate you, man. That is a uh, good call. Um, yeah, maybe I will show that. But let me get to some Super Chats, guys. Lots of Super Chats came in since last night. You know, I was on the, that show last night. Lord Bibby, f- oh no, hold on, before I get to Lord Bibby, Danimal gave a super chat on streamlabs.com slash the Hake Report. Great talk with T-Jump, Hake. Well, thank you, Danimal. Yesterday on the Hake Report, I talked to T-Jump. Two days in a row, I interviewed people on Hake. How were those? I don't know. Could they have been better? Uh, I'm sure, but I appre- I'm glad that you enjoyed that, Danimal. Thank you. Lord Bibby 42 with a couple of super chats here on Streamlabs. Last night's debate summary, Hake. Oh, no. Last night's debate summary. Hake says, Same-sex couples raising kids is not natural. It does not come from God. Hunter says, Durr, what do you mean? Hake asks, Are you serious? Hunter, you're a dips... Bleep. Hake won in dominating fashion once again. Well, thank you, Lord Bibby42. And sorry, kids or people who had sensitive ears, if the bleep was too loud. Uh, Lord Bibby42 with another super chat says, Hake, it's always fun participating in the debates. Yeah, and, and the live chat does participate in the debates. Lord Bibby42 gave some super chats over there on the For Modern Day Debates YouTube channel, which is cool. A channel worth supporting, I think. Uh, especially when Hake is on there. Nice, huh? These dumb white liberals never know what hits them. Hunter started out a sissy boy, and to this day, 
he remains a sissy boy. Hit me with that soundbite, young Chris. You the man. To this day. <laughs> well, thank you, Lord Bibby42. Very cool. Based America first on streamlabs.com slash the hate report. Good debate. Lousy topic. Same-sex household adoption is legal in all 50 states since 2017, yet the foster care system is no better. Hunter's arguments only address the symptoms. Unlikely that the adoption rate of older and disabled children increased. In- interesting point, based America First. I did not ga- do any fact-gathering or research for the debate. I simply wrote down, you know, stuff in my mind, on my mind, that I wanted to get across to it. Perhaps I could uh, do some research on it a little bit, but yeah, it's, it's already been happening. And apparently it's been happening for 30 years on, somewhere in the world, at least 30 years, because there's been studies, 30 years worth of studies on it. Um, lousy topic in the sense that it has been so-called legal in all 50 states. Wow, what in the world since 2017? That's a disgrace. But it's an important topic nonetheless because uh, we should question even stuff that is quote-unquote legal. It's kind of like the, if you were to debate women voting. No, it's been legal since, you know, over a hundred years. It's quote-unquote legal. Ill-advised, though. But yeah, um, that's so true. Hunter's arguments do only address the symptoms. It's kind of like evil fighting evil, you know? Base America First with another super chat, says, T-Jump's moral ideal is nobody can force anyone to do what they don't consent to do. The exact opposite of anti-discrimination laws, which he's sometimes against and sometimes for. Well, he's for, he's against affirmative action, but he's for anti-discrimination laws, yeah. And the, and politically correct culture, but it's okay because of the economy. Yet he also believes societal morality is improving. Yeah. Just a lot of Uh, intellectual justifications for doing wrong. What a mess. That's the atheist for you. Am I right? People in general are really blind. Accepting wrong is right. Base America first with another super chat. 30 plus years of JLP saying, forgive your parents, stop hating, believe in God, return to the Father, do what is right. And then he quotes Joe. Sleepy Joe in Phoenix, Arizona. JLP needs to stop his dangerous, violent rhetoric. (laughs) I know. Somebody isn't hearing. Somebody does not have ears to hear. Right? Thank you, Based America First. Lord H. Sizzle with the Super Chat says, Hey, you did an amazing job yesterday. Winners don't resort to name-calling, vulgarities, and profanity. Those are all characteristics of a triggered, sore loser. Maybe Hunter Avalone should focus more on his sandwich-making skills. (laughs) Well, thank you, Lord H. Sizzle. Uh, There is such a thing as name-calling for Christ. You guys ever heard of Dean Saxton, Brother Dean? Legendary Brother Dean Saxton? Uh, um, He would name-call for Christ, but he would not do the vulgarities or profanity, although he did say the N-word once. (laughs) Is that profane? Maybe in some contexts. I guess on a college campus you're allowed to say it. Because college campuses are supposed to believe, believe in free speech. At least they have a free speech zone. I thought the free speech zone was America. I'm sorry, I thought this was America. This is not America? Shameful. Uh, shout out to Brother Dean. He's been on the Jesse Lee Peterson show back when I was producer and before I was producer. Uh, thank you guys for the super chats. Uh... How about this, guys? Based Russia? Am I kidding? I don't know. But I saw this Daily Mail article. Putin's TV propagandists target a n- the new White House so-called press secretary, J- Karine Jean-Pierre. You know that little black lady? Cute little black lady, looks like a teddy bear black lady thing, 44 years old, but she's a supposedly a lesbian, quote unquote married to a a supposed white. (laughs) But these Putin's mainstream TV propagandists say 
She only got the job because she is black and gay. Yeah, she's 44. Uh, black and gay. Shameful. Russian state TV hosts laugh. This is just the headlines. I don't have the clip for you. I mean, it's in Russian. Do you guys know Russian? Some of you might. And I know it's translated, but I, I don't have it for you. Russian state TV hosts laugh as they said, Karine Jean-Pierre, a lot of blacks have French uh, names, would be replaced in a month or two by a white heterosexual male, meaning normal male. They claimed Jean-Pierre was not chosen for her professional abilities, but instead because she is black and quote-unquote gay. Pundits joked that she will be replaced, you know, after one or two months. They claimed in their rant, if she makes a mistake, she will say, I'm not a professional, I was chosen for other reasons. <laughs> they, that's what they're joking. Jean-Pierre is 47? Wait, hold on a minute. Now they're saying it's 47. You know, Daily Mail is a very sloppy outlet. They, you know, chock full of, oh yeah, 47! I said 44. She's 47. Born in uh, 1974, I guess. Yeah, makes sense. Fort de France, Martinique. Capital of the Caribbean island of Martinique. French overseas territory. So what's she doing in America? Get out. Maybe she married one for the green card. But she's been in, she's been a a gay agenda pusher for some time. She replaced Jen Psaki, who's also a gay agenda pusher, by the way. All emotional for the gay kids. Remember that? The fake imaginary gay kids. This false thing of identifying as misidentifying as these things. Looks good fit for uh, 47, says Smells OG. I know. Um... I'm shaking my head. Remember Jen Psaki? An Obama holdover. Cried for the children. Crying for the children. Over in Florida. I get so emotional about it. She was appeared on some co- podcast. And this woman is even worse. This Corrine Jean-Pierre is even worse. But Jen, phony Jen Psaki. Fake redhead. Well, I, she's fake. The red hair is, some of it's real, some of it looks awfully died, in my opinion. I don't want to speculate too much. But she's sad because they can't push their gay agenda on the children in Hawaii that much. Oh, kindergarten through third grade, they can't do it. (laughs) It's so sick. It's so wrong. Not good. Uh, so right on to Russian state TV propagandists. If <laughs> It's such a joke. They call them mainstream TV propagandists. Like here in America, and then over in Daily Mail Britain, which does, does Pierce Morgan still work for Daily Mail? The sleazy anti-gun propagandist trying to invade America's value, invade on America's values and subvert them, taking away our Second Amendment because, he's, because he hates America? And our, our gun culture. <laughs> this is, I'm talking about stuff from like 10 years ago or more. But come on. Propaganda all over UK where they don't even have the freedom of speech. And in America, they don't have the freedom of speech. I just got off the phone with Alex in Sweden talking about the disinformation uh, board that they wanted to start. I want to spit so bad. But I won't do it, because I have (laughs) self-control. I have willpower. Um, They're the main pushers. That's sleazy Joe Biden and all those people and all the mainstream media and everybody in in America who's like in the mainstream. Facebook, Google, Twitter, IG. uh, I go on Restream and Streamlabs. They're like, oh, support Ukraine. Oh, support Mental Health Awareness Month and all that stuff. Those are the ones driving people mad. And pushing hatred uh, into people, pretending that they're fighting against hate. They're stoking stoking hatred against uh, the most innocent people in America. And killing them. It's sick. So sick. 
But anyway, it was pretty funny. Uh, Russia. They got my attention. <laughs> uh, speaking of, oh, let me just get to this last uh, clip here before the break. Phony, speaking of phony Joe Biden and all this stuff. Um, here's this clip 16, I think it's in the folder there. And then I gotta show you some, the wonders of nature and nature's God. Sleepy Joe put out this whole contrived speech, propaganda video, saying that baby formula is his, one of his top priorities, I think is what he said. And I got this clip from the Hill, but he put it out from the White House, or they put it out for him. And they had a bunch of cuts in it, because I think that he's reading. I don't know if he can smoothly make a statement like this. But anyway, here's Sleepy Joe Biden. You know, they're saying, oh, there's a baby formula shortage, because women are so selfish, in my opinion. They don't want to breastfeed their babies, and it's, you know, and then there's a bunch of gays who are, like, like uh, the Department of Transportation secretary, who doesn't want to breastfeed the babies that they uh, acquired. Well, here's Joe Biden swooping in to save the day. I almost spit, but I didn't. Here it is. I know parents all across the country are worried about finding enough infant formula to feed their babies. As a parent and as a grandparent, I know just how stressful that is. I want to provide a few updates on our work to get more formula into the United States and onto store shelves so it's available to you. Today, I'm invoking what they call the Defense Production Act to ensure that manufacturers have the necessary ingredients to make safe, healthy infant formula here at home. The Defense Production Act gives the government the ability to require suppliers to direct needed resources to infant formula manufacturers before any other customer who may have ordered that good. I'm also announcing Operation Fly Formula. That's to be able to speed up the import of infant formula and start getting more formula in stores as soon as possible. I've directed the Department of Defense and the Department of Health and Human Services to send aircraft planes overseas to pick up infant formula that meets U.S. health and safety standards so we can get it on the store shelves faster. And I've directed my team to do everything possible to ensure there's enough safe baby formula and that it's quickly reaching families that need it the most. Look at this one of my top priorities. And I'll continue to keep you updated on our progress. Wow. Thank you, Joe Biden. He's make, making out this whole speech, kissing up to the females. This is a, another one of the problems with women voting, right? Kissing up to the females. What a joke of a country. I'm, dire- I'm starting Operation Fly Formula. It's very we- rare for women not to be able to produce milk. Lazy! Is this like fast food for babies? Come on, says... Alleges John, or says John Frederick. Yeah, I know. Not my president. (laughs) It just seems... I think I've heard Chris say this before. We're not a serious country. And I think that's... it's true. No, not Formula One. No, not killer formula. Necessarily. And why is there a formula shortage? One, because the FDA... Supposedly, oh no, there were some babies who died, a couple of babies who died, four got sick or something like that, allegedly from this formula maker. And who knows if that was actually the case. I heard that it wasn't the case, but I don't know. I've heard both things. They're better safe than sorry type of situation, so they shut it down. And then um, also the supply chain crisis, maybe. What a mess, huh? The overreaction with the shutdowns causing problems. Don't know. But, uh, I mean, feed your babies with the real, real thing. And I hear, I heard from, I think, Big Bump, that they have, uh, you know, um, milk dispensaries. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, we are at the top of the hour, guys. I just wanted to show, I may talk a little bit more about the formula thing, just because it's, It's so ridiculous. It's so phony. It's so playing politics and trying to get the women against the Republicans, you know? Uh, But we are at the top of the hour. Let's get to some music, shall we? Justin Volmar. 
Um, the album Every Place is Home Co-ops, <laughs> not dispensaries. <laughs> oh. um, Every Place is Home. This is from the 2002 album on Blue Sanct Records. This track is entitled, and it's sort of a Christmassy song, maybe, I don't know. But I hope you like it. It is called Do You Have Hope in Your Eyes? Nice, right? Justin Volmar. I think he's a Christian. Press mute or cover your ears or grin and bear it. Or go plant your garden, you musical Philistines. I'll be right back, just like three minutes or less. Or more. I'll be right back for hour two. Hang tight and enjoy. Isn't this nice, guys? Cuddling music. Uh, Christian. Is he talking to Jesus? Is he talking about Jesus? Hague CD collection wears a yarmulke. What do you mean by that? Is this a xylophone here? Elevator music. No, it's not a xylophone. <laughs> what is that thing? Toy? <laughs> Glock? <laughs> Glock? What? Um, is this a remix of a Twinkle Twinkle Little Story? Oh, Glock and Spiel. <laughs> okay, not to be confused with a Glock 
Uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, no, it's not a remix of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Lullaby. This album is good. Thank you, Canadian David. You have good taste. Why do we have to listen to this every day? Have some decency, hey, says Turd Ferguson. What's up, man? My garden is all set. I guess I'll suffer a few minutes, says Costin. Yeah. Um, that's some weird music, says Mexican Mama. Um, you know, a little bit more from the chat about the baby formula situation. And then I'll tell you about the Republicans, because this is ridiculous. Um, if for some reason you can't lactate, then do something else, says Robert Lee. Um, if babies lose weight, says L.J. Fox over there on YouTube, who I think also is on the Facebook crew, our resident medical expert lady. If babies lose weight within the first few months, the situation can become deadly very quickly. Yikes. They need the babies to die depopulation, says Nicole R. I mean, they don't mind babies dying, that's for sure. You've seen them supporting a, a woman's right to choose. You heard that on the Jesse Lee Peterson show. With her, what, her, what to do with her body. Who were they interviewing, that, that guy? Over there in Congress, I think. Breastfeeding versus 40-hour work week. Comments are galunas. Yeah, I know. Selfish females. Am I right? Of course, one of the things that I wanted to mention in my discussion with uh, T Jump yesterday about women working is that, and I think I did mention it, is that the more women you have working, the, the more difficult you're making it for the rest of the women who want to do it right because you've raised costs because more people can can afford more. Because they're both working, you know, the cup in cases where there are couples working. And uh, so it makes it, prices rise because of that. And so the, so it's, money is worth less. And so on a one income house, it makes it a little bit tougher for the uh, men and women who want to do things right. What a shame. Um... Bill Gates, Bill Gates backed, I don't know if this is, there's any truth to this statement, but Al Fa says, <clears throat> Bill Gates backed artificial breast milk company is not responsible for the delay six days ago. There's no evidence that investments involving Gil, Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg in artificial breast milk. <laughs> okay, thank you. <sighs> what a shame. Let me... Before we get to more of your chats and things, guys, you can super chat and you can call in 888-775-3773. Let me tell you a little bit more about the, um, they're going after Republicans. I saw on Twitter, 192 Republicans or something like that was trending on Twitter. Oh, because these Republicans voted no to Joe Biden's solution more money and, and uh, power for the government taking over the private industries to push out baby formula, pretending to swoop in and save the day when they're probably part of a big part of the cause of the crisis, you know? I don't know. But um, there were some Republicans who bucked the party on the baby formula bills and voted with them. I think it was 12, Democra 12 Republicans or something like that. Four Republicans and one Democrat did not vote. A handful of Republicans bucked their party on Wednesday in votes on two separate bills aiming to address the nationwide baby formula shortage, which was just all of a sudden hyped. Um, I saw it on Fox News just all of a sudden one day. Maybe it had been making headlines that I didn't see. There's a lot of headlines I don't see. And it seems like it was may have been this week. Maybe it was late last week. The legislation would grant... Food and Drug Administration, $28 million in emergency funding to respond to the scarcity of baby formula. Uh, Infant Formula Supplemental Appropriations Act, 231 to 192 vote, mainly among, along party lines. Brian Fitzpatrick, Dan, Don Bacon, uh, Anthony Gonzalez, Trey Hollingsworth, John Katko, Adam Kinzinger, total rhino, anti-Trump, sleazy, 
Tea Party, Tea Party imposter, right? David McKinley, Tom Rice, Chris Smith, Mike Turner, Fred Upton, and Ann Wagner. Those are the Republicans who uh, voted for this legislation. Scalise wanted people to vote against it. I mean, these are, it's rhinos versus rhinos, you know? It's hard to know what the, the decency is. The truth is, uh, Pelosi brought up the bill in hopes of covering up the administration's ineptitude by throwing additional money at the FDA with no plan to actually fix the problem, all while f- failing to hold the FDA accountable. Interesting. So we'll see. What a mess. Let's see. There was another bill that was um, special supplemental nutrition program for women, infants, children. Is that the WIC thing? Permanently, permanently re- another bill that was permanently relaxing restrictions on the kinds of baby formula that the individuals in the federal so-called low-income assistance program for women, infant, children, WIC. That's what I was calling food stamps in Hake News. Earlier today on the Jesse Lee Peterson show, allowed to purchase. The program is formally known as, f- formally known as, what, SNAP? I, don't, I forget what it was. WIC. The only opposition to that legislation came from the Republican Party. No votes were Andy Biggs, decent guy. Lauren Boebert, uh, okay, fine. Matt Gates, all right. Louis Gomer, I uh, kind of like him. Paul Gosar, kind of like him. Marjorie Green, the queen herself. <laughs> Clay Higgins, Thomas Massey, I like him. Chip Roy, I think I like him. Right on, you guys. If anybody's votes I'll trust, it would be that group. It would be out of that group, in my opinion. Wolves in sheep's clothing, in my opinion, guys. They don't care about the babies. They care about kissing up to the women and appealing to their emotions. You know, you know what I mean? <sighs> let me talk a little bit about, um, let me read some of the chats that I saw, I came across. I like to peruse Odyssey. By the way, Danny East said, mute time! <laughs> Uh, you don't, you don't like Justin Volmar? Give it a chance. But thank you, Dan East. Appreciate it. Shout out to those people. Baby formula shortages, Biden's obesity prevention program. Uh, there were some interesting statements, Commander Kim and others. The mentally ill guys, this is a a reference to that first story that I covered today with the, the black from 2020, COVID patient, 20 year old or so. Punching the army veteran, 90-something years old, I think he was, I don't know. Um, And two months later, the man died. Black on white, black on senior citizen crime. Oh, but he was mentally ill. He was, what did they call that? Uh, Schizophrenic? The mentally ill guy's dad is lying when he said he didn't know why his son was sent to a nursing home. When this story first broke, the black dad was mad at and blaming Whitmer for her forcing his son into a nursing home. Wow, interesting. Now he's playing dumb and I sure has more pocket money, speculates Commander Kim. I don't know about that, but it may be. I don't know. Ragnar says, Ragnar 0321. Federal courts are all corrupt to an unbelievable level. Do not ever find yourself in one. It is beyond m- mad, I think is what he's saying, mad. Mad Max Australian courts levels of corruption. Tch. So sick. Ragnar 0321 talks about the McMichaels whom I referenced, who were looking out for their community over in Georgia, I think it was, with the jogger. Confronting the jogger trying to do conduct a citizen's arrest that was botched the McMichaels were not ill-advised They had no intention of killing that jogger. I know that when confronting his intentions in their community. I Just I only say it was ill-advised because nowadays you don't have uh, The mob is gonna by hook or by crook get ya and the mob got them That's what I that's all I meant by ill-advised might not have been all I meant by it, because 
Blacks act erratic. So, what a mess. Whitmer made a decree that nursing homes could not punish nurses or staff who did not show up to work. Wow. So all of these Michigan nursing homes were overrun with China virus patients and had a massive staff shortage. Wow. Wow. If a mentally ill white man was beating elderly black people in a nursing home, we would never hear the end of white supremacy beating scions of slaves. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I know. It's true. He was not the only, he not only beat the veteran, he also beat up an elderly woman in the nursing home as well, according to uh, Commander Kim, talking about that young male who was deemed incompetent. (laughs) So wrong. They are incompetent, but you still have to hold them responsible. Still have to punish them. An animal who uh, kills a human being, I think it's in the Bible, you're supposed to kill that animal. But nowadays, people are so, like, didn't Shamu, not Shamu, but some killer whale or something killed a person when a person fell into the, you know, the basin with the, the pet animal at the zoo or at SeaWorld or something. And uh, they're like, don't kill the animal. No, life for life. We need men running the show, not these female-minded people. Uh. Terrible stuff. Anyway, uh, thank you, Super Chatters. Do you want to see something awesome? 42 years ago yesterday, I think it is what it was. This is awesome. I meant to cover it yesterday, but I got carried away with T-Jump and then with calls and all that stuff. Talking about women working. We set out to talk about racism, and then we start talking about women working. Well, this woman blew up Mount St. Helens. Can a mountain be a woman? Sounds kind of like woman, although Helens is, is plural, or maybe it's a last name. But Mount St. Helens. What a name was trending on Twitter. I've been to Mount St. Helens. I've talked about that briefly yesterday. It's been 42 years plus now since it erupted. And prior to that, it was over 100 years, I hear, before that, that it erupted or whatever. But it was this nice, beautiful, cone-shaped, symmetrical, whatever you want to call it, mountain. And... I have these clips that are B-roll, so I'll try to describe them for the audio podcast listeners. But show clip 11. This is from AccuAstronomy on Twitter. They were showing some cool footage, and I have some photographs too, I think, maybe. Um, Mount St. Helens erupted on this date in 1980, meaning May 18th, I think. An eruption so large, and it was like 8.30 in the morning or so, that it was easily seen by the this weather satellite... And so I'm going to show, like, this tweet and this GIF, or GIF if you prefer, but I call it GIF. I think the guy who created GIF called it GIF. But anyway, um, I used to call it Ethernet. Now I call it Ethernet because of Bill. But anyway, here's this. Look at this. um, Clip 11, I think, is what it is. It's just silent footage, and you'll see, like, from space, and then they have, like, the state dividing lines drawn over this satellite image of, like, the weather... And you see, like, this big, huge cloud explosion in Mount St. Helens. Is that in... That's in Washington? It's in the Pacific Northwest somewhere, right? Look at this. Look at that. Bang. And then it, like, grows, grows. And the wind, like, kind of carries it more inland. Bang. Crazy. Isn't that cool? Mount St. Helens erupted, blah, blah, blah. So that's one, one picture of it from space, if you believe in space. So cool. Uh, so awesome. How can you not believe in God? Uh, clip 12, here's this weird animation. This is kind of it's not exactly accurate, but they turned it into a smooth uh, animation. 
I think is what it is. Yes, time lapse of Mount St. Helens eruption made from just six photographs, and then they did some like weird morph transition between the photographs to make it look like a smooth video. And so it looks wrong, but listen, look at this weird animation. This is from Taken from the Ground, I think, of, uh, by photo- photographers during the, uh, during the thing. And I think that it kind of bulges, too. Look at this. Crazy, huh? Look at that. Dang. And that mountain is huge. That's a lot of land moving. Huge landslide, I heard, is what that was. Dang. And we th- human beings think, oh, climate change is causing earthquakes. It's stuff like that. I mean, I don't know. Uh, here's, here's some uh, 2019 tweets from D. Burbach. I guess that was the 40th... It wasn't the 40th anniversary, because it happened on 1980, the year before I was born. Uh, May of 1980, one year and two months before Hake was born. Um, Look at this. This GIF shows, or GIF if you prefer, I like to say both things so that the people who are annoyed like that, (laughs) like me, uh, hear the one that they prefer to hear. What a kiss up. Aren't I right? Uh, this gif shows the initial eruption sequence. There's a giant ball of 2,000 deg lava inside, whatever that means. The north side slides off. The kilometer-wide ball of lava explodes. Look at this. It's awesome. Okay, so photograph stacked on photograph. Look how huge it grows. Here it is again. I'm trying to make the sound effects for the audio podcast listeners. Isn't that awesome? And I have, uh, no, let me play clip 14. It shows like the, this little, um, a reenactment. Because <laughs> there were workers on the side of the mountain. And I don't know if they died or not. 57 people died from this thing. 57 deaths. $1 billion in damage. On this day. This is from C-SPAN history. And then I'll get back to calls, guys. I just brief interlude. So cool. Um, On this day, 1980, this uh, May 18th, here's the volcano along the Cascades mountain range in southwestern Washington state. There you have it. There's your geography. Listen to this, and it's like an old school little documentary reenactment with workers, and it shows animals uh, reacting, animals in the sea and on the land. (laughs) And I doubt that's was taken at the time of this, but it's trying to get your imagination into it. Listen to this. And the morning it. of May 18th, 1980. It was like any other Sunday morning for a Forest Service tree planting crew on the lower southern flank of the mountain. Until 8.32 a.m. Whoa. Bird. Wildcat. Fish thing. Is that the real sounds? cubic mile, tons of ash, rock, and ice were rocketed into the stratosphere. The cloud reached nearly 14 miles into the sky. Crazy, huh? That is wild. Back in 2019, this David Barbuck tweeted, 39 years ago this morning, 8.32 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time, Mount St. Helens exploded with the force of 20 megatron bomb. Killing 57 people. And I have photographs, awesome photographs from this thing. And I think, like, at one point, the thing bul- was bulging. Like, the mountain started to, like, bulge up. Crazy. 
the view from 35 miles upwind, and you see like this, it almost looks kind of like one of those mushroom clouds from uh, atomic bombs and nuclear bombs. Can you show like these photos from these, from Mount St. Helens? It's, I know there's a ton. Just kind of plow through all of them, maybe. Uh, three seconds apiece. Wow, look at that! Dang. I'll skip, I'll spare you guys all that reading, because, you know, you can read about it yourself. Cataclysmically erupted, though. Wow. Look at that cool, like, ash. I think that's ash and dirt and dust and smoke, I assume? 57 people killed, 250 homes, 47 bridges, 15 miles of railroads, 185 miles of highway destroyed. Man. Beautiful Pacific Northwest, too. I've been there after the fact. Obviously. Plume rose over 80,000 feet. Ash as far as 250... Ash caused complete darkness as far as 250 miles away. Reached the east coast. Ash cloud reached the east coast. We're in the west coast. Two or three thousand miles away or something like that. I don't know. In three days. Look at that huge ash. Maybe that's what happened to the dinosaurs, which looked probably more like birds, maybe. Crazy. Man, so awesome. Is that photoshopped or is it real? Very beautiful in a certain way. Do you remember? And like part of the, like the whole mountain got kind of like defaced with the chunk taken out of it. Crazy. Uh, a, a volcano. It's a volcano. Are all these, all mountains are not volcanic, right? Whatever. Man, I was so gray and nuts. Did you, sh- can you show the before one? There's one before where you can see like the cracks are kind of turning kind of like, it's like bulged, according to it. The bulge on the northern face of Mount St. Helens before May 18th, 1980. I don't know how they got this picture. Look at that. But you can kind of see like cracks in the ground. And, like, the cracks kind of open up and get wider. Like, if you're, say you cut your, you cut your arm and then it, 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 uh, swells up and so the crack kind of opens up. Kind of like that. Nuts, huh? Before and after. Before beautiful mountain, after exploded mountain. Huge chunk taken out of it. And it flattened the forest right at the foot of it. Crazy, huh? Anyway. Doom Jesus doesn't care. He doesn't care. Uh, anyway, let me get to a call or two, guys. Perfectly natural. Weather happens. <laughs> Imagine Haken a museum. I remember when this happens, his baby squirrel. It's nice. Uh, let me get to Joe in Idaho. Um, how are you doing, Joe? I'm doing well, Hake. How are you doing? Doing well as well. Thank you. Hey, I wanted to comment on uh, what you said regarding uh, animals that kill humans should be killed. Yeah. Uh, I disagree with that completely. And uh, I think that <clears throat> as men, men use our intellect. Women go by emotion. And as men, using our intellect, we should know that these animals that... Uh, uh, are often, often, for the example you gave, it was an animal, I believe, that was like in a sea world type of place. Uh huh. Um, these animals, their natural instinct is to kill. And uh, so they're not doing anything wrong. So punishing them for doing what they are naturally meant to do is idiotic, in my opinion. But once they kill, they've crossed a line. They're not supposed to kill human beings. Nobody told them that. They don't have, we don't have to tell them that. Are you saying it's unfair? I'm saying it's unfair because it's, that's their natural instinct. So you're punishing them for what their natural instinct is. That's not a very wise thing to do. Uh, why, is it, why is it unwise to kill them for, for killing a human being? Because I mean, I, I get that you instinct. said that they it's na- their natural it instinct, but why is that wrong? They didn't, they didn't do it maliciously. That is their natural instinct. But even with, if it wasn't, 
with malice, it, they still killed a human being, and that means that they would be, that means that they would kill another human being if given the chance. So you, rather than give them the chance, don't we just kill well, them? Any, any wild carnivorous animal would kill a human being given the chance. I mean, I think the one of the big mistakes is human beings putting animals, wild animals, dangerous wild animals, in places like SeaWorld or, you know, uh, zoos, that kind of thing, where they, or circuses, where they are close to human beings. But they're kind of awesome. Isn't it kind of cool That's that we... Fault. It's our fault when mistakes when mistakes happen and they and they end up killing somebody or maiming or whatever. Yeah, because that's our fault. That, we put the animals in these situations where they shouldn't be. They should be out in the wild. Yeah, you might be right, where but they it's, belong. isn't it kind of awesome of when I'm we right. when we dominate them and like can tame them on some level and train them and so no, do the earth. No, awesome about that. Yes, it is. It's. It's no, undeniably it's not. That's, just, that's not very intelligent. There's nothing awesome about dominating an animal. <laughs> yes, it animal, is, man. Wild animals belong in the wild. Uh, I mean, generally they alone. do. Generally they do, but but if if it were truly not awesome, I ha- far be it from me, but I'm going to do it. So it's not that far from me to appeal to the popularity of circuses and Seeing animal trainers do things with tigers and lions and elephants, and although elephants are not carnivorous, that I yeah, know. and it's completely they they beat the animals into submission. They do all kinds of horrible things to them. How is it horrible? How is it horrible if they're beating them? Right. That's that. That's horrible. I mean, that's not okay. Is it? But it's okay for the animals to kill the people just because it's their instinct and they don't know better. They weren't told better. That's their natural instinct. It's and our natural instinct to, them, to subdue the earth, though. In situations where they're where they're that close to humans, that's our fault. The, yeah, that's our fault. But it's but it's uh, our natural instinct to kill. It's our natural instinct to kill the animal that killed the human. And God said <clears> to well, too. No, it's not. It's not our natural instinct Didn't, because we have we have superior brains, especially men. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and we ha- we should have the intellectual uh, ability to say, "Oh no, this is um, this this animal has a natural instinct to kill, so it's not the animal's fault." Whether it's the animal's fault or not, it's our fault if we don't kill that animal, so that the animal gets to go on and because sometimes once an animal tastes human blood, it starts to want more, and there's all kinds of different things different wise reasons for killing an animal that kills a human being. Life well, for life. It, well, it's rare. It's life for life. That's, <laughs> that's, that, that applies Blood to humans, in, blood out. But not to animals. That's for humans. It's, I agree with humans. If a human kills another human, yeah, they should get the death penalty. If they, you know, do it on purpose. Right, if it's but an actual... But with animals, it's a different story. Murder. Animals are not uh, humans. Do you eat and meat? I they, forget. They don't have the intellectual capability to know to know that it's morally wrong to kill another to kill a human. Right, but we're not killing them because it's morally wrong necessarily for them to kill. We we're killing them because they killed us. One of us. We but killed. They didn't know they were doing something wrong. They don't have to know for us to kill them though. Because why? When you kill it doesn't make any sense. It, I think it use does. Use your brain. Use your brain, Hake. Yeah, that one of my brains. One of my brains says. One of my brains says that. How many brains do you have? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when you kill an, when an animal kills a human being, that's setting. That's starting. They've crossed a line, and and it's easy once an animal or a human being. I think I'm speculating here. Crosses a line, well, that to recross that line o- over again. I understand what you're saying, but that occurrence is rare, first of all. Yeah. And it's even, it's even more rare if we don't encroach upon their territory. Right. If we just leave them alone and don't encroach upon their territory, it's going to be even more rare. But it's we're, already rare. 
But we're that supposed animals, that to wild animals kill humans. That is very. That's actually a very rare occurrence. We're supposed to subdue the earth, not just <clears throat> stay no, out. We're of the, not. Yeah, we are. Who said that? God said it. In where, your, where in the Bible? Yeah, in the Bible, it and it's common sense where does too. It say that in like ger, ger, Genesis. You know about where it says about dominion in the Bible? Yeah, dominion, dominion over the animals. What that has been misinterpreted. I, I can, I, means, I'm sure it has. Yeah. What that means is we should be taking care of animals. Right, which not, we do. Not, uh, no, we exploit them, we abuse them, we torture them, we're extremely cruel to them in much, far greater Sp- numbers than caring for Speak them. for yourself. <laughs> I, I am. I am. I'm speaking. Well, I'm speaking for humankind, mankind. I right. Think. I know. The heck. Um, uh, what's Nick saying here? Nick's Nick said that uh, animals should be subject to man. Uh, something weird about knowing what an animal is thinking and feeling. I read about tigers in India. They wouldn't normally interact with humans, but when one would kill a human, the townsfolk had. F- have to find the tiger because it will kill a human again. And animals have the uh, best best lives in captivity, so, says Nick. <laughs> so because they do it there, does that make it right? Uh, like who said who, that's who one, decided that's that's right? Well, yeah, because the tiger will kill again, according to them. But yeah, according to them, what do they know? They know by experience more than you or I. Have you ever been killed by Are a tiger you- or seen somebody killed by a tiger? In your I've town? never been killed by a tiger. Yeah, exactly. That I know of. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I think they know more about tigers than you or I. How do you know that? Uh, this is my speculation. Well, exactly. But you don't know you're, that they don't know. You're making an assumption. I don't know that they don't know. You're making you an assumption that, that they, they don't know. know. And you're making an assumption as well. Fine. Uh, my and maybe they're encroaching upon tigers' but you're, land, you're bringing up territory, and maybe and maybe they're use, maybe they're bringing tigers into human spaces, that's, which is not a wise thing to do. You, I know, but wild you're, animals. But you're, you're, you're making up wild. you're making up ill-advised things that the India people are doing, but you don't even know what they're doing. You're just speculating I, I, now. I am speculating. Let's get let's get to let's get back fully. to reality because you brought up okay. the intellect. <laughs> we were talking about this for ten minutes. Uh, you you're acting well, like we have this you great. Brought it up. Actually, you brought it up originally. No, I know, I know, you, I know. Before but we're talking I called about it. you, because you said women act emotionally, men act intellectually, or something of that nature. No, men so are supposed to be intellectual. Um, they're not. No, not like that because the intellect isn't Real supposed men to make us use their intellect. Real men should use their intellect. Not Real com- men make smart decisions. I know, but this is not coming off very manly coming out of you. you even when you're saying real men, it's, you're not convincing me. Why aren't I convincing you? Because you're saying real men. You're like, real men do this and that. But you're talking about uh, my uh, intellect tells me that I understand. My okay. intellect tells me that I understand that the animals didn't mean to. It's just their natural instinct. It's kind of like saying, oh, blacks can't help it. This black who punched this uh, veteran, he was just it's insane. It's not like saying that because humans are different than animals. From, yeah. We're, we're, different we're completely from. different. So to, to compare the two in this respect, in this regard. I know, but, makes, but, well, then no sense, but so you are comparing sense. them because you're talking about their intentions and their, uh, their understanding. You know nothing about their intentions or understanding, nor is it, in my opinion, relevant. You, you kill them when they kill you. No, basic science tells us that, animals have a nat- that carnivorous animals have a natural instinct to kill. Anyway. That's you, basic science. And common sense says you kill those who kill you. But that, that applies to humans, and I agree with that, and 100%. I think it's even in the Bible for animals. Uh, I, well, you've got to show me that, but I'm not religious, so yeah, I it know. doesn't apply. Uh, it doesn't matter. We still, we still dominate the non-Christians. We're supposed to, anyway. We're, we Christians are supposed to 
put the smack down on your female-minded intellectualism that wants to be soft on animals just because they don't know better. You ain't putting no smack down on me, I'll tell you that. <laughs> right That's a double <laughs> negative. You're talking like a POC. I know, I, do, I, know, I did it on purpose. <laughs> be funny. Well, I appreciate it, man. Um, nice to hear from you. Good, co- Great conversation. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Good speaking with you, Hake, as always. Watch out for those animals in Idaho. I will. There's lots of wild animals here, so. Nice, man. All right, take care. And I'm, I'm leaving them alone. Okay, you take yeah. it easy. All right. Bye. Bye. He had to get away from the animals in PDX. He originally was Joe from Portland, Oregon. PDX is a short for Portland, Oregon. <sighs> okay. We are at 41 minutes after, and at long last, is it truly going to happen, guys? Amber Heard. Phony females kissing up to this lying female victimhood. This is from The Cut. I have some screenshots from this article. It's just insane, in my opinion. Um, Amber Heard, if you're not familiar, is an actress... She was married to an actor named Johnny Depp a very short time. He was much older than her. It was ill-advised, and now he's suffering the attack upon men because she wrote a dumb Me Too or DV domestic violence article or somebody wrote it for her. I heard that the ACLU penned it for her, like wrote up the first draft or something. I haven't looked into it to confirm that, but that's the rumor that I heard. Thought I saw that on Fox News. She wrote this article in the Washington Compost, smearing, uh, I- implicitly smearing, uh, this m- male, male actor, Johnny Depp, saying that she's a victim of abuse. And women who speak out against abuse suffer the brunt of blah, blah, blah. So then this article comes out last week, and I've been meaning meaning to get to it, from The Cut, far-left female-oriented outlet. Is that redundant nowadays? Because every mainstream media outlet is far-left and female, including seemingly Fox News. Or should I say faux news? Makes me want to spit. This is the headline from May 12th, and the uh, section is power. Which women do we choose to believe? Like, Like as if we can choose to believe somebody. Can we choose to believe somebody? I don't know. Uh, Amber Heard claims an extremely famous man abused her for years. Why do so many people hate her for it? And it's an article written by Claire Lampen, L-A-M-P-E-N. Is that a Christian? Certainly doesn't act like one. Not very Christian. To me, it's unchristian to uh, go by the testimony of a woman and not two or more actual legitimate witnesses. Why do so many people hate her for it? (laughs) Because she spoke out against an extremely famous man, abused her for years. When the evidence has shown that she was the one who was, like, going after him, I know it takes two to tango, but she was evil and phony. And actually, you even look at this picture of her that's in this article, in the, in the, on the headline of this article, and she has that... I hate to use the term because it's such a... it's such a commonly used term... She has that resting blank face. You know what I, you know what face I'm talking about? She has that face that's arrogant, comes off as arrogant if if you'll allow me to read into her expression, right? Um arrogant, pretending to be innocent, uh pretending to be all Victim, un, unimpressed, just, uh, just, do you have that, can you show that face of hers? Look at that. Bags under her eyes, pouty lips, 
two, a second hole, two, uh, <laughs> two piercings in the same ear, immoral. No, but look at that. This is the photograph that they chose to show on the cut. And she's wearing a, a manlish, mannish suit, by the way. In this thing. Anyway, I go down the article, and it's blah, 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 to quote uh, Greta Thunberg. For her part, Heard never claimed to have behaved perfectly in their relationship, says, writes this woman who I just mentioned, Claire Lampin. Never pretended to, never, never claimed to behave perfectly in their relationship. That's a nice euphemism. Isn't that a nice euphemism? Oh, I never, I never claimed to be perfect. Typical, like, woman type of thinking, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not perfect. Here's a, here's an interesting uh, term. Witnesses for Depp described Heard as demanding and volatile, and a marriage counselor who worked with the couple testified that they were engaged in, quote, mutual abuse, unquote. Mutual abuse. Isn't that accurate? Isn't that a nice statement? I don't know about this marriage, anything about this marriage counselor who testified on behalf of Johnny Depp, the actor, against this actress. Mutual abuse, that isn't a term domestic violence experts like to use. They don't like to tell you the whole truth. They don't like to admit that it takes two to tango. They don't like to admit that the woman kind of provokes the man. The male who may act out sometimes, right? Domestic violence experts don't like to use it because it ignores the unequal power and bullying inherent in intimate partner violence. Intimate partner violence. They have to call it intimate partner violence because um, partner is the LGBTIQ word and the LGBTIQ, I heard, are more frequent among the so-called domestic violence stuff. Self-defense is more accurate. And in her testimony, yeah, right, this woman cl- pretending like she was doing self-defense. In her testimony, Heard outlined a cycle in which Depp's jealousies, inflamed by alleged lapses into sobriety, sparked explosive arguments. She said he tried to dissuade her, this is interesting, from taking acting jobs. She's an actress, but he said, you don't have to work, kid. I'll take care of you. And he criticized her for criti- considering roles that required sex scenes and kissing. Understandable. Because that's how they got together. I told you about this last time. They got together from uh, like a kissing scene inside like a shower. Inside some movie. Isn't that sick? She was already quote unquote married to a female as being like a lesbian. This woman is like nutty. LGBT type of woman. And he was already, he already had children by some other woman. But they got together for this art, this movie, and had a kissing scene. And then Satan got into the, both of them. And they started kissing some more. And then within a couple of years, they start to get together and get quote-unquote married. And then, understandably, he doesn't want her continuing to do that. Otherwise, she's going to do it to him, what she just did to her fake wife, a lesbian wife. What a weird woman, huh? Eventually, she even had, she said he even got wardrobe approval, meaning he's like, you can't wear that. Understandable, he's the husband. She, she tells her what to do. She's acting like that's so unreasonable. Give me a break. So phony. I would try to stand up for myself, she told the court. By December of 2014, I would push back. And the funny thing is, throughout this article, this evil woman who's writing this article in the mainstream media, The Cut, and I got this, by the way, from the far-left outlet, The, the uh, Pocket, Pocket headlines, you know, on 
Firefox, they promote liberal propaganda. Because the people, by and large, it seems like the people are not falling for it as far as this woman's victimhood. But the female-minded mainstream media is trying to force that uh, narrative of female victimhood onto the people. So sick. So wrong. I would try to stand up for myself. By December 2014, I would push back. Depth fans, they call them, this female calls them depth fans. I'm no depth fan. I don't even really like uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. I liked the, I liked the ride, which predated him, in my opinion, on, in Disneyland. I liked the first movie, all right, I guess. But by the, by the rest of them, I didn't like them. I'm no fan of Johnny Depp. I just can see through these lying females and, and uh, fake victim uh, playing females. Okay, a little bit more. Here's, a, here's another line from it. Depp fans have a disturbing ability to take the evidence Heard presents and flip it against her. The video of a drunken rampage footage in which Depp smashes glasses and empties a bottle of wine becomes proof of Heard's capacity for manipulation. True. True. They question her motives. Why was she recording him in the first place? Then there are text messages Depp sent his friend and actor Paul Bettany in 2013 musing about, dr- oh my gosh, drowning her and setting her body on fire. Wow. Uh, one observer granted that the text did look bad, but she did marry him still. <laughs> and listen to this. This is that phony female idea, intellectual idea. We're, men have the Intellectual capacity. I don't think that Joe from Idaho would fall for this. But if victim blaming is frowned upon these days, you wouldn't know it from looking at the way people talk about Heard, Amber Heard, online. They need to use the full name or at least the first name of these people. Because when you use the last name of somebody, it makes them sound like a man. Like I remember Obama being used for Michelle Obama or Biden used, being used for Jill Biden. In the good old days, you would use their first name, Jill, Michelle, because it distinguishes them from the male. Anyway, um, if victim blaming is frowned upon these days, you wouldn't know it by the way that the normal people talk. And thank God, right? In my opinion, thank God the normal people don't fall for this, you're not supposed to victim blame. You better victim blame. And by the way, this woman is no victim. Or if anything, it's mutual abuse, as that marriage counselor called it. Mutual abuse. Uh, Even the makeup company Milani Cosmetics got got in on the action, posting on TikTok. This is nice. Debunking a claim made in opening statements that Amber Heard, they tried to call it just Heard, relied on concealer kits like theirs to cover her bruises. The thing is, says Ireland Baldwin, writing on Instagram, I know women who are exactly like this. They are manipulative and cold, and they use their very womanhood to play victim and turn the world against the man because we live in a society where it's cool to say men are all the worst and blah, blah, bleepity, blah. She said the F word, E. Dang. Right on, Ireland Baldwin. <laughs> is that Alec Baldwin? One of Alec Baldwin's nieces or daughters or something like that? I think it is. Um, anyway. Here's another, here's another cliche from this cliche-ridden article, and then I, I have to wrap up, guys. We're at almost at five minutes till. False allegations of domestic violence are exceedingly rare. Please. That's, that's such a tired, typical line. It makes me want to spit. It almost reminded me of when the caller said, real men do this or that. <laughs> I'm like, come on. That's silly. False, des- dem- false allegations of domestic violence, exceedingly rare. Reminds me of false allegations of rape, extre- exceedingly rare. Yeah, right. If there's one thing that the, the old school, even the Bible times knew, is that women lie, or they don't tell the whole truth. That's why in, you're supposed to swear to tell the whole truth. Mm-mm. Um... Blah, 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 the legal process dredges up relentless grief. And it certainly isn't weighted towards survivors. Survivors is another line that they use instead of uh, victim. Because they want to sound tougher than they already are. Okay. 
Here's the, here's toward the end of this uh, article. In her op-ed, Heard wrote that after divorcing Johnny Depp, she felt the full force of our culture's wrath for women who speak out. Please. The, well, I know that there's a lot of people in the culture who are not part of the mainstream media who do get annoyed at these women and they show hatred toward them, right? You shouldn't hate this woman, this, this dumb, stupid woman. <laughs> Sorry, kids. But, uh, abusing the word dumb and stupid. But it fits, right? But the mainstream culture kisses up to these females. You know, the, by the culture, I mean, like, the mainstream media. You know this. As this trial makes clear, she wasn't lying about that. Even after so many women have come forward with accounts of abuse in recent years, the Heard trial, meaning Amber Heard, is a sobering reminder that a victim's credibility is still a fragile thing. <laughs> this woman is, has no idea, and she's calling her a victim. It doesn't matter what you say when no one is willing to hear it. I think about survivors following the trial from home. If this is a response a person can expect from airing their claims in court, why speak up at all? And that's a great question. Why speak up at all? That happened between you and him, if it even happened at all, you know? Deal with it amongst each other. Don't be blabbing it with the help of allegedly the ACLU writing the article on your behalf to target and smear the men. You know what I mean? I'm swallowing my spit. <laughs> Some woman, Catherine Tom Thompson, tweeted out this, uh, tweeted out the article sharing it. Uh, she's a blue check mark on Twitter. Um, quoting that last line about victims' credibility is still a fragile thing. But let me read some refreshing comments in the Twitter section to this article. Acknowledgement? This is from the people, the normal people on Twitter. Acknowledgement of female perpetrators and male victims is progress, not regression. A focus on truth can only benefit survivors. It's the liars that are going to have trouble post in a post-Amber Heard world and I've got to question the motives of people who have a problem with that. Nice. Right on. Some person says, Great article. There's an inherent hatred of women that a lot of people have. It manifests itself in so many different ways. Fans realizing the possibility that Johnny Depp's career in high-profile movies may be, gone, may be over. Amber Heard's catching all that smoke. Give me a break. I don't care about Johnny Depp. I'm sorry, but this is a very one-sided article. Nothing new, just the same old stuff rehashed with the same shade thrown on so the social media backlash. The backlash has good merits and needs to be explored further. Nice. I choose to believe abuse victims whose stories can't, aren't clearly outlandish and impossible. Can you hit someone in the, po in the pubic bone from inside their blank with a broken bottle that produces no injuries? Can you break a nose without leaving a mark? Plus, she fake cries. And that's a woman tweeting. Nice. That's a logical woman, at least in this case. No, it's a sobering reminder that feminists toyed to hijack victimhood using lies and refuse to acknowledge male abuse victims. Even more sobering reminder that abusers lie even if men fit the category of victim. They'll automatically be assumed the perpetrator. Isn't that nice? Well, right on to the regular people, not the phony, false, victimhood. Last quick super chat here, guys, on Streamlabs. Willie Powell says, amazing performance, destroying Hunter again. The AP was also pretty good. Like Kaz, I like Kaz going into deep, deep into topics. Keep up the good work. Lord H says, well, masked Joe Tato's brain is like a boomer computer's web browser. 17 pages loading, two froze. You can't find out where the music is coming from. <laughs> Well, thank you, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Ledge Klinger says, hey, ask if the caller's ever heard of the ghost and the darkness. Oh, sorry, I missed that, man. I'll check into it. Thanks, guys, and take care. See you tomorrow, hopefully. Bye.